Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing Sports Photo Automation version 8. This is not a tutorial video. This video is meant to just help users who are already familiar with version 7 to start using version 8. And I'm going to give you the information that you need to know for an easy transition. Now I tried to keep it as similar as possible, but there are a few changes that you will need to know about. And um, so the first thing is, this is now created in the new Photoshop Plugins API. So it's going to be under the Plugins menu. And the only PixNub plugin that is not available now for the Plugins menu is Easy Green Screen. That's still in the Filter menu. And so there is nothing left under the Extensions menu or the Filter menu except Easy Green Screen. If you see anything there other than Easy Green Screen in those two places, those are old versions. And I will be um, sh having another video soon to show you how to remove those old versions. But other than Easy Green Screen, everything will be in the Plugins menu. Now, Sports Photo Automation 7 does run on Mac M1, and it runs in native mode, not Rosetta. So for Mac M1 users, don't even run Rosetta anymore. Everything runs in native mode. Even Easy Green Screen will be in native mode under the filter menu. The only thing you'll be missing is the um, extra panel for Easy Green Screen, which you really don't need. You can run Easy Green Screen from the filter menu. So for M1, don't even run Rosetta anymore for any PixNub plugins. That, and make sure you update to all the latest releases as well. And so uh, this version 8 here, this runs in CC 2022 and higher only. It will not run in CC 2021. It's going to give you a message in the window if you install it and you're in CC 2021. That tells you you need 2022. And the reason for that is because Photoshop is doing a lot of updates to the API. And I had to use some of their updates that they recently made in order to make this work like I wanted. And they're still updating things and there's still some things that I want to work a little bit differently. So. I'll be updating this, and as I do, um, I'll be using the new features that Adobe has coming out soon. So um, for SPA, it will require the latest Photoshop release for a while um, as Photoshop is updating that. And so I think this actually runs um, quite a bit better than version 7, and the speed, you can get up to twice as fast, but to do that, you're going to have to... Um, run it a certain way. I'm going to show you in this video how to do that. Um, but it's going to run a lot faster and in many cases use a lot less scratch disk and less memory. Um, so that's one thing that's really nice. So in this user interface here, it's going to look pretty familiar to you for as far as setting up your PSD. This is pretty much the same as version 7. The only difference is if you want to add more than one player, now there's a drop down to select player one, two, or three. And every template must have a player one, but if you want to add a player two, you have to select that first and then select the alignment mode and then add the player. I'm not going to be demonstrating all of this in this video. I'm going to be redoing all of my videos, um, all the tutorials for everything here. But if you're familiar with version seven, just know that this is going to work pretty much exactly the same as version 7. And the test text replacement, again, this is going to work the same. The only difference is with the text here, um, your text layers in version 8 in your PSD, they have to be all capital letters with no spaces. And you have to use in your template one of these 15 names here for the text layers. These are the only options. So unlike version 7 where you could just pick your own random name and then match that in the CSV, that's not going to work in version 8. Now the reason I did this, well it's for a couple of reasons, but the main one is because it's going to run faster. Knowing or having a set of known names, it's not going to have to hunt through the entire template looking for what names you may have. And, and there's a lot of people that are using templates that are like 100 layers or more. And that was really slowing down the processing time. Um, 
especially when I made it in the last version to not be case or space sensitive. Uh, it, it had to scan all the layers to be able to ensure it was doing everything properly. And that actually took a lot longer time than I thought, and it was slowing it down considerably for larger templates. So I just made it simple. And based on a poll I did on the Facebook group asking how you wanted these names formatted, the overwhelming majority of people said they liked the idea of all caps with no spaces. That makes it really easy to, to know it's going to match. So in your template, just make sure they're set up this way. And it makes it easy in your template, too, to see which of the, your text layers are SPA because they'll stick out because they'll be the ones with no caps or all caps and no spaces. So just keep that in mind. You'll just need to update your templates with the proper names. Now, the batch processing window, this is um, very similar to what you, you're used to, um, but I've reorganized this quite a bit, and a lot of stuff is hidden, so um, I'll be going over this down here in a bit, but the, the top section here is um, these are your required items that you'll have to use anytime you run. So you'll need a player images folder, a save folder, a template file, and then your save settings. So if you're just doing a basic template with no text replacement, a single player, this is all you're going to have to fill out as this top section. Now anything below with the checkboxes, this is optional. And whenever you turn on one of the checkboxes, you'll see you have additional optional, well, the information is no longer optional for most of it. Once you check something, you have to fill that, that spot out. So for instance, if we're using a CSV file, as soon as we check this on, there's a spot for us to upload our file. And if you don't do that before running, that's going to tell you you need a, to select your file. And this one in particular adds this optional checkbox up here for templates in a CSV. So with the templates, you have the option to run from a CSV or a single file, or it will do a combination of both. If you check this, you're going to have to upload a folder now, and that folder will be the folder. Let's look at a sample CSV here. So. Um, Oh, I, oh, here we go. So the BG file, and this can say background file or template file as well for the header. I, I'll be updating the documentation, but um, for that header, it contains the file name with the extension that you want. And that way you can switch templates between row here. And that folder will be linked to this folder here. And so... You always have to have a, a PSD template file selected, and if you check the use templates from CSV, you'll have to also select a folder. And so anywhere where there is not a template in your CSV, it'll revert to the default file you have selected. So pretty much the same as last time, but the only difference is you'll have to select both a file and a folder if you're using the CSV in this. So moving on here, um, for your memory mates, as soon as you check that on, you're going to um, have a spot to upload a team file, and you'll also have, let me uncheck the CSV first, you won't have, if the CSV is not checked, you won't have that drop down. So in the case of where you want to run memory mates, um, if you don't use a CSV, you can upload just a team image file, and it will use that same team image file for every single player in your player folder. So you don't even need to have a CSV if you're doing memory mates, if you're not replacing text. You'll just have to run a, a different batch for each team. Now, if you want this team defined in the CSV file, of course, you're going to have to have CSV selected with your file. And then in this drop down, you can select get team images from CSV. And then if you get the um, images from the CSV, you'll have to select the folder that contains all of the images. And then in your CSV file, you'll have your different team files selected. Now the difference between this and the, um, the background file option 
if you tell it to select team images from the CSV, if you don't have a team file in there, it's not going to add a team file at all. So, um, and that allows you to um, run a batch where you have some templates that are memory mates and some that are single players. The ones that are single players, you just leave out the um, team image for that row when you're not building a memory mate. So you could build your single images and your memory mates in one run. And when you do that, you select the um, get from CSV option, and that will get these files from that folder, but only for the rows that have something in there. Hope that makes sense. Um, the logos, I ended up keeping the logo option. I know I talked about maybe removing this, but it wasn't too difficult. This works the exact same as the team. Um, you have the option to use the same logo for the entire batch or get the logo from the CSV file. And again, if you're getting it from the CSV file, you'll have to upload a folder and then you'll define your logo file here. So if you have different team logos for each player, you could um, set that up in the CSV. Now, these all need the file extension too, by the way. So just to point that out. Oh, and also while I'm at that, the um, the player files also need the extension now too, which and if you're copying and pasting the layer names um, anyway, then they'll already have those extensions. Like if you're copying it from Windows Explorer with the copy file names program, it'll bring those over with the extension. A couple of other new additions here. The, um, one new addition we have is the um, run pre-action on player one. This is going to run an action on your player one file, and it's only for player one, so this is only for if you're doing single player images and you need to run that action. But you can select the um, action set, and once you select a set, you can select the action that you want. And this is going to run that action on the player before it puts it into the template. There's a few use cases for this. One of those is for dynamic templates when you need to um, create some kind of effect on the player. And it may be easier to write an action to do that before it's put in the template. You could also use this to actually extract the image if you have an action recorded to do the extraction from easy green screen or any other way that you extract. So um, there's lots of things you can do with that. And I'll save an, this for another tutorial video. Run post action on the image. This is going to run the action on the composite after everything's been put together. Pretty much the same as SPA7. Smart objects. Now, um, smart objects, I added this option because I found that that Photoshop, when using smart objects, was just using a lot more memory um, and scratch disk. Especially on Windows, I, I found that there was a huge, um, huge benefit by not using smart objects for the memory and scratch disk. So this is optional now. Now, when you set up your templates, those, of course, will be smart objects. Leave them that way. But when you're building, if this is not checked, it's not going to bring over the new players or teams as smart objects. And for the most part, you can leave this unchecked for the vast majority of the runs. The only time you'll ever need to check this on is if you know you're going to be rescaling the player or teams again after it's built. Because if it's not bringing it over as a smart object, it's scaling it destructively so that means if you have to upscale again, you're not getting the original image quality. I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but that's only if you're rescaling. Now, if you use these pause to scale options, you do not need to use the smart objects because these are pausing on the original scaling from the original image. So this is not a rescaling at that point. However, if you use pause on finished image, and then you rescale after it pauses, it's already applied this initial scaling. And so if you're rescaling, 
Um, if, you, if you want that non-destructive, you'd have to use smart objects. I don't think you should ever need to do this that often. And that would only be if, um, that would only be in the cases, like I say, where you know you're going to need to upscale. But if you're setting up your templates properly, really you shouldn't need to be rescaling anyway for the most part. Now this pause on finished images though, while I'm at it. So when you check this on, you get a couple more options. But what this does um, is this will pause once your um, composite is complete. And it allows you to edit the image in Photoshop. And when you hit continue, it'll keep building the next image in the batch. Now on SPA 7, this was not available on Mac. And on Windows, it didn't actually work very well anyway. On SPA 8, this works flawlessly, um, both Windows and Mac. There's a couple other options too. There's a replace text window on pause. So if you have that button checked, it is going to, when it pauses, pop up this text replacement window. You'll have the name of the image in here, so it'll have the actual image file name, so you can reference that. So if you don't want to use a CSV, you could check that button, fill out your text, and hit replace text when it pauses for each image. And when you're in batch, it's also going to have a checkbox here you can have on that will auto continue the batch when you hit replace text. So that way, if you don't want to do any more editing in Photoshop, you can have that on and just replace the text with each image. And as soon as you hit the replace text, it'll just continue on with your batch. I'm going to be covering all of that in its own separate video as well. I'm, like I said, I'm remaking all the videos um, for SPA 8. And this pause before actions button, this is new. So when this pause step runs, you may want to edit it before running the um, post actions, if you're running post actions. Um, and that way too, if your actions are actions that do stuff to the text, you might want to edit the text and then and then pause before the actions. And then when you hit continue, it's going to run the actions. Again, I'm, I'm probably confusing a lot of people. This um, This is really meant for its own video, so. These are things that you won't use most of the time anyway. See, anything more that I've added here? Oh yeah, um, the other thing too is this save profile. Now I know that a lot of users are not very good about making sure their templates profile is the same as their image profile. Heck, I think a lot of users out there don't even know color profiles exist. So because of that, I tried to make this a lot smarter in SPA for the color profiles. So you will never have an, a situation where there's going to be any color shifting in SPA 8. It's always going to convert whatever image is going into the template. It's going to convert that to the profile of the template. As long as your templates, that is as long as they're either sRGB or Adobe RGB 1998 in your template, your images, if they're Pro Photo RGB or any other color profile, it doesn't matter. It's going to convert those before it even brings them into your template. Now, what this ICC save profile is, this is what you want the final save profile to be. So even if your template is Adobe RGB 1998, but if you want the final output to be sRGB, you select that here. And when it saves, it'll flatten the image and save it as sRGB. Now, this option is not available if you're using PSD or multi-layer TIFF. That is because converting um, multi-layer documents, converting the profiles, is pretty tricky because the layer styles and things don't always look right when you convert from one profile to the next. So that is why um, that's only available for single layer images. But regardless, even if you're saving as a PI, PSD multi-layer image, as long as your template is sRGB or Adobe 1998, any of your image files, like the players and teams that are getting put into that template, will get converted to that template profile first. So you're not going to get any warnings anymore that are saying, hey, your profiles don't match. It's just going to take care of all of that for you. 
All right, the last thing I probably should talk about this first, but I'm going to talk about this last since I forgot about it until now, is the actual speed of this running. Now, if you don't do anything and just use the default settings and hit run, the speed is going to be pretty close to the speed of version 7. In some cases, it may even be like 10 or 15% slower in my testing. If you're just running it as is, um, however, if you run it with the Photoshop panels hidden, especially on Windows, the speed will be, in some cases, twice as fast. Now, one thing that SPA 7 does that I could not program directly into here is it will close all of your panels for you because I know that speeds up the processing because Photoshop doesn't have to continually try to refresh the layers panel and these other um, these other panels. So the tab key on Windows will close all of your Photoshop panels. So if you do this before you start the batch and then go to plugins, sports photo automation, sports photo automation and um, bring that window up. Now if you batch process and you run like this, it will be much, much faster than if you run with all the Photoshop panels open. And then when you're done, if you hit the tab key again, it's going to bring your Photoshop menus back up. Now don't try that on SPA 7 because that'll make it slower because SPA 7 already closes these windows. And if you close them first um, in SPA 7, seven when it runs it'll actually turn these back those back on when it runs and actually slow it down so with spa8 i did a lot of things to improve the speed and it just so happens that since i couldn't do the auto close panels part that slows it down by about as much as all the other speed improvements i made so it's pretty much a wash. So if you don't close those, you're going to get roughly the same speed as SPA 7. If you do close them, you'll get about up to twice the speed on um, on Windows. On a Mac, it's about a 15 or 20 percent increase when speed when you close those. But Mac is so much faster anyway that it's still faster than Windows regardless. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, there's one more little bug too on Windows when you do that. Let me see if I can reproduce this here. So if you tab, okay, I got it to reproduce. So if you're tabbing along and you see that now your tab is switching the buttons in SPA instead of closing and opening the Photoshop windows, well, that's because Adobe decided that the tab key was meant for two purposes. One purpose is to close all of the panels, and the other purpose is to switch between buttons in these plugins panels. So why they tied the same key to two different things, I don't know. But there is a bug on this, and it, the only way to get that to where your tab key is not locked to this anymore, well, there's a couple of ways. First, if you just um, select a button in SPA, and then you can go back. Now your tab key is tied to Photoshop again. And let me see if I can, yep, there we go. So now I got this stuck in this window again. The other way is to click on a button in Photoshop, or one of these tool buttons here, and that'll put the tab key back into Photoshop's hands and away from the plugin. Let me see if I can get this stuck when the windows are closed. So um. Okay, there we go. So if you get these stuck when you're here, you won't have the buttons to choose here. So the only way now to get your, since the tab key now is not bringing your Photoshop panels up, the only way to get those back would be to first click on something inside the menu here. And then when you're done, the tab key will then be linked to Photoshop again. This is a known bug. Adobe's known about this for about a year now. So they say they're working on it. I don't know when they're going to actually fix that. So the choice is yours whether you want to mess with that or not. Um, for small batches of maybe 10 images, I wouldn't even mess with it. But if you're doing a batch of hundreds of images, 
knowing to close this first and then bring this up to run it could save you hours off your batch. So, and then the trick is just to um, be able to get back knowing that if your tab key is stuck to the window, you have to click on a button in there and that'll release that. So, don't want to kick that dead horse too much, but um, anyway, if you do that though, it will really, really speed up the processing. See anything else on my notes here I forgot to discuss? Let me look real quick. Um, no, the only other thing I guess to discuss is in this UI here, um, this bottom section for resources. Now this is really cool because a lot of people can't find the tutorials and they're always asking about that and where to update. So I put buttons in there. The new API allows buttons to link directly to websites. So that's really cool. So if you need to know where to download the updates or view the tutorials or get some templates. And then I also put the free Platinum downloads in this section too because I know a lot of Platinum users forget about these. And that's going to take you to the um, free Platinum download section, which is one product I release for free each month for the Platinum users. And these stay on here for three months. But what I do is I release one each month and then remove one. And so it's constantly rotating. So for each one I release, there's three months to get them. After that, they're not available for free anymore. So just make sure you go on there once every three months and get those. And then the contents within this resources section, you'll see this change from time to time. It's actually getting this information from the website for what to display here. So if I come up with cool tutorials for how to do things or something that I really want to share with the users for like dynamic templates. I'll be coming out with some tutorials for those in the very near future. Um, you might see something pop up there that says, hey, did you know you could do this? Check this tutorial out. So that's kind of handy having this year. I needed to fill, find something to fill this space anyway because I had to make this window pretty tall in order to be able to include all the items I needed with the, um, the, with the template set up. So because of that, the home menu had a lot of empty space. So that seems like a good filler for that space. Anyway, I know there's probably something I forgot. Um, if so, I'll just post it on the um, Facebook group if there's something else that needs discussed. But um, feel free to download this and just start playing with it. As of now, when I'm recording this video, um, CC 2022 is still in beta release, but that is available for everybody to download from their um, from their CC app. So you can install the CC 2022 beta and start using SPA 8 now. And it shouldn't be too long. I'm thinking just a few days if Adobe releases CC 22 at their Max convention, um, then it will just be a few days before. CC 2022 goes public, um, but it, it is public now. It's just in the beta section, but as soon as it's their official release, then it will be under the normal app section in the CC app. I don't know for sure when they're releasing, but the, but they don't, I mean, they don't say officially when they do, but it's usually during their max convention, which is uh, October 26th through 28th. So I'm guessing one of those three days is probably when you'll see the official CC 2022 release in your CC app. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this video kind of drug out a long ways, but really this is very, very simple. If you've already used SPA 7, um, all this stuff should be pretty straightforward to you. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask in the Facebook tech support group. That's where I'm going to be answering all questions about um, SP8 because I know there's going to be a lot of people using this that have been used to 7 and have questions and I'm filtering all of those into the tech support forum because I don't want to be individually answering the same questions in a bunch of different emails and please don't send me IMs directly into Facebook. I don't want to be answering a bunch of the same questions in personal messages. It's just too time consuming to answer something a hundred times when if it's discussed in the support group, I can answer it once or twice, you know, just as it pops up and then everybody else sees 
the answer to that as well. So anyways, thanks for watching and I really hope you enjoy version 8 because I think it's actually going to be a lot better. Um, at least in the testing I've done, this just seems to run a lot smoother than version 7. And especially with these with this option for no smart objects, I've seen a huge improvement on Windows for not using um, Scratch Disk. On Mac, on the M1 I've been testing, it still does use a lot of Scratch Disk um, with or without smart objects. I think a little bit less without it, but the Mac M1 runs so fast regardless anyway. It's just, you just need to plug in a dedicated external for Scratch Disk on that really is what I would do. They're, they're cheap anymore, so... Not a huge deal, but just something you'll probably want to do. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I know this is drug on, so um, thanks if you've continued through the whole video and watched the whole thing.